Sheila, it's five minutes. Right. I'm going to ask you to count us down once I've put the battery in. Oh. Five, four, three, two, one, yeah? Okay. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. What's the most challenging thing about being an actor? Learning the lines, I think, off the top of my head. Um, that's the most scary thing for me. Tell me how you learn your lines. I'm sure you've been asked that many times. Yes, I have. Well, I learn my lines by visual and oral technique. I have a little dictaphone and I look at the script and I try to learn it on the page and I shut my eyes and then I do it into the dictaphone and then I play it back and I look at it and think, oh no, there was an and there instead of a but. Do it again, do it again, do it again. And then at night I dictate them into the machine, put it on my pillow before I go to sleep, hoping my subconscious will teach me them. Do you get a stage fright? Yes, I've spent my life being having terrible stage fright. But recently, I've been going to a hypnotist for first nights, but I've never done a good first night until recently. Um, and that's been a huge disadvantage, actually, because I've never, you know, the critics are always in on the first night, and I've never been at my best. I've been terrified. Is there an equivalent of stage fright for when you're doing a film? Uh, if you have a very tricky scene, and the line thing as well, because in films and things they want you not to muck about. I mean, my husband, John Thor, used to get very irritated with people who didn't learn their lines, because you don't want to have to waste time doing that, and sometimes you have to learn them overnight if you've got a big scene. So, yeah, it's a bit scary, but nowhere near as scary, because you do, you do know that you can do it again if you completely muck, muck it up. Did you learn your lines with John? Did he help you? Uh, no, no, we never we never worked together very much. I mean, if if the, if we were doing something very very tricky, if you'd say I absolutely can't learn this speech, then he'd hear me with it. But no, on the whole, not. We tried to just be parents and people at home. Do you think that spending your life pretending to be other people makes it harder to find out who oneself is? Well, I think everybody pretends to be other people all the time. I mean, I bet you're different with your boss than you are with your lover than you are with your children if you have them. Uh, we do an act all the time. It's only four o'clock in the morning that you think, hello, this is me. I'm not sure whether I like it or not. How did you become an actor in the first place? Well, I became an actor at a period when women didn't have many opportunities, even though I was lucky enough to go to a grammar school on a scholarship. I left school at 15, and my choices were top one being a teacher, second one being a nurse, not a doctor or a specialist, oh no, not for women, secretary, something like that, and a few odd people went on the stage. My sister was a variety artist, so I knew about theatre and that's what I did. Have you changed as an actor over the years? Yes, I think I have. I've, I've got more confident and I've, I've, I have more fun with it. Um, and just experience, life experience, you have to have experienced certain things to express them, in my opinion. I mean, that's a bit methody, but that's the way I work. So I have to dig into my memory and my emotional memory when I'm doing a part. And the more emotional things you have happen, the more armour you've got. Do you learn from other actors watching them? Well, mainly I learn what not to do, because I often sit watching people and thinking, that's not working, why isn't it working? And I analyse very often. And if they're frightfully good, it just puts me off a bit, because I can't be as good. How much do you have an influence on the direction your character takes? Well, that depends entirely on the director. You know, I mean, some directors want you to do exactly as they say, and if they're any good, I will. But, I, for instance, I've been working with Richard Eyre just recently, and he creates an atmosphere in the rehearsal room where everybody contributes. And years ago, I worked with a marvellous woman called Joan Littlewood. She would, if somebody was cleaning the theatre, she'd stop and say, darling, what do you think? Do you think that was working? To the cleaner. So she made sure that everybody was involved, and I love that. How difficult is it to develop a chemistry between you and another actor? I don't find it difficult at all. I mean, the rehearsal process, you go into it and you open yourself up. You have to. You have to really let yourself be emotionally open. And if you do that, then you get very close to people. And indeed, we do, as actors. I always think that that's, people are slightly jealous of that. Journalists who call us lovies and are nasty to us is because they know that we have this little tight family and we protect one another and we have empathy with one another. Do you look for something particular in a part? I look at the moment for challenge. You know, I've got to the age where I'm lucky enough to have enough money not to have to look for money. And so I look for something that's different. I mean, at the moment, I'm going to be doing a comedy role because I've been doing something rather serious. I love doing musicals occasionally. I like anything that's different and challenging.
Is there something you change about your career? Well, years ago I was in a very successful show in the West End and I could have gone to America with it, but I chose to stay at home and have a baby. So instead of an international career, I've got a lovely daughter and grandchildren. You've written about your marriage to John Thor, you've written about life after him, and now you're writing a novel. Yeah, well, I hope I'm writing a novel. I should be there doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice to see you. You're welcome.